What's up, guys? Uh, we got another virtual tour for you. We're here with Rich from Predator BP. He's all the way across the pond in the UK, and uh, we're connecting worlds here, you know, different continents. <laughs> and uh, so you definitely guys want to stay tuned for this one. So, Rich, we're really interested to know how you started in all this, what your history is with uh, snakes and ball pythons. So, like every kid, you know, I was into animals, and I actually started off breeding rodents, uh, fancy rats and mice. And it wasn't until <laughs> my 30s that I decided that I was going to get my first snake. Okay. And my first snakes were um, royal pythons. You know, I got three different royal pythons, and then I started moving into larger constrictors, Burmese pythons and retics. Oh, wow. Um, boas was really, really my thing. And I thought that's what I was going to end up breeding. I always wanted to breed snakes from the moment I got into them. But I waited quite a long time before really making the decision. And um, I thought it was going to be boas. And then I bought uh, another ball python, a banana Mojave, as a pet. Oh, I wanted an animal that was going to be easy for my kids to hold, you know, and um, get them sort of really experienced around snakes because the eight-foot boa constrictors weren't doing it. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. And um, I bought that banana Mojave, and then that was it. I was just sold. I started looking into genetics. I just fell in love with the species all over again, but in a different way. And then... I sat down and decided that I was going to start breeding. I started adding to my collection. I'm in my second season breeding now after building this collection. And um, I started my own YouTube channel where we really focus on keeping and breeding all pythons. We try and help new breeders coming into a hobby as well as documenting my journey, what I'm learning as I'm going through it. And, uh, you know, it's been fantastic. But yeah, animal lover through and through. And I finally found the species for me that I think will be the species I'll love till the end of my days, you know? Right on. So speaking of YouTube, you're like knocking it out of the park right now. Like you're like, you're doing like a, a video a day. Your channel is growing really fast. You've only been doing it for like 15 months. Like talk to us about that journey. Well, you know, YouTube has been probably one of the most challenging things I've ever done in my life as well as one of the most rewarding things I've ever done in my life and I'm 38 years old now you know it's taught me so many new skills you know from somebody who's not fantastic uh, technical wise because I'm absolutely not I've had to learn so much so fast but I knew it was really really important for me to do YouTube because I wanted to get out there I wanted to meet people within the community across countries um, I wanted to be able to document my own journey. And the fact that I've been able to then help people along that way, which has come about afterwards, has been fantastic. And then looking at the group I've put together with the Four Horsemen, and the Four Horsemen is Shane Kelly from Small Town Exotics, Ron from BBM Reptiles, and Rob Barraclough from Royal Balls. And we've got a guy from the US, a guy from Puerto Rico, a guy from Malaysia. And a guy from the UK, I was joking with them earlier, actually. It, says, it sounds like a joke, doesn't it? There's four of us sitting in a bar, you know. What happened <laughs> <laughs> Which is quite funny. The reason I love our group so much and the videos we've been doing together is because it shows how this hobby unites us no matter what country we're in. We've never even spoken face to face, only through mess messages. But we speak every single day and this hobby has bonded us. We've been able to help each other with personal issues as well along the way and support each other like friends for life through this hobby. That's and that's awesome. what the YouTube thing for me is all about, how much it's connected us and, you know, helped us all to grow and our passion, you know. That's exciting. I mean, yeah, definitely. It's, uh, it's a way that you can really connect with people that, um, like we said, we when we were first starting this uh, video today, that – We've messaged each other a bunch of times, but we've never really sat and talked and never got yeah. to see each other face to face. And uh, it's something that, you know, we talk about uh, having little bubbles. So you have everybody has their own little bubble of, of people that they, they work with and they deal with. And, uh, you know, we have a little bubble over here, a little bubble over there. And YouTube and kind of what we try to do is connect all these bubbles and uh, so that we can connect to them and kind of see where everybody's at and maybe help do something positive. And uh, 
Ryan's always talking about how we need to try to get the bubbles to connect to each other. So, you know, you with the four horsemen and, and we love those guys too. Uh, Ron, you know, he's, he's a, a ride or die kind of guy. And yeah, we uh, met him at Tin Lake, uh, last October, right? Yeah. yeah. I saw that video. That's actually where I first saw you guys. And that's what made me jump on YouTube to find you. So it's funny how these things oh, that's work. Crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> that's awesome. awesome. Yeah. So, yeah. And Ron, and we just did a video with Shane, uh, from small town. So that's so funny. Now we got you. We're going to have to get your other buddy and, and get all four horsemen. And oh, they'll, be, they'll be well up for that. Right that's on. awesome. Uh, I know that you're you're working with a bunch of really cool animals. Um, show us what your favorite animals are that you're working with. And, and you know, show us the stuff that you got going on. And uh, then we're going to talk a special question after that. <laughs> yeah, Roger, that. So I'm going to grab my uh, favorite snake. And if anybody follows me, they'll know exactly who this is. So this is Ronin here, uh, the masterless samurai, and he is a leopard, enchi, pastel, orange dream. It looks like he's looking a bit dull here, but you can see those oranges. Uh, coming Absolutely. Out. He's also possible hide. Now, I was going to put him to the Inferno this year, but he was a little bit late to be ready. Um, so I've actually ended up putting him to a female albino now to hopefully reproduce him, but a het albino version, because uh, I looked at the albino gene and how strong it is in stripping out all the black pigmentation. Obviously, it's been around for a long time, so we've seen, you know, a lot has been done with it. So it was difficult for me to choose where I wanted to take my albino females, but mm -hmm. when I saw the leopard combos, it sold it for me. Absolutely. Yeah, leopard just is awesome. And let's get a close-up of that head stamp, because... Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, we'll and we'll get some B-roll of this, but man, the <laughs> and we all know what the Enchi's doing in albino combos now with leopard, like that orange that it brings through in the white is just ridiculous. Yeah, I, love I, it. I think you got a great combo there. We work with uh, the Triton is Enchi, uh, pastel, orange dream, and um, fire. Right, for some reason I just missed that for a second. So the fire gene in there uh, creates a head pattern like that. But the coloration you have because of the leopard is just, it's so different. It's crazy how one gene swap makes such a big difference. Um, I'd love to get fire into this boy. He's also possible het pied. So hopefully later on down the line, we can create some excellent pied combos if he does prove out. So absolutely. That's awesome. Amazing. Keep us uh, tuned in on that one, man, for sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, guys. So um, speaking about the Inferno earlier. And if you don't know what an inferno is, it's lemon pastel, yellow belly, hidden gene, woma, and granite. And it's one of the most visually striking combos I've probably got in any of my females. Now, I decided this year to put this male to her, and he is a leopard pinstripe. But the reason I put him to her is because obviously I want to get leopard in there into the inferno combo. I want to get pinstripe in there, two of my favorite pattern changers. But the fact that he is double hit for hypo, and for Pied, just give some real spice to this project later on down the line to hopefully uh, prove out those recessive combos will be pretty amazing. Hypo versions, Pied versions. Um, it's yeah. incredible. This boy is one of my most reliable breeders. You'll put him in with any female, it, the most stubborn of females as well, and he'll go to work within 30 minutes. So <laughs> it's reliable. That's awesome. That's great. We love hidden gene woma stuff over here too, man. Like it's one of our favorite genes. You know, the big setback for me last year um, was I put a pastel clown male to my inferno, and yeah. um, she gave me a bit of a disaster of a clutch. I had five eggs that just weren't fertile at all. Uh, and the last egg I lost right at the end of incubation. But my dream yeah. there was to create some head clown versions. But I love the hidden being one of my clown combos that I've seen coming out. Absolutely. I kind of derailed that project for me. So <laughs> we actually have uh, right now a killer leopard clown male going to a super pastel calico fire hidden gene woma female. So we're trying to make those, some heads for that too, man. That'll be awesome. <laughs> yeah. That's guys, good. Man. That's why we're on um, calico actually. As a side note from that last little bit, uh, you're going to need a bunch of racks because you're going to have to hold like everything back. 
this is the next step for me because all these are obviously built out of um, wardrobes from ikea and um, what a lot of people in the uk tend to use i don't know if people in the us you know use that kind of stuff or whether they just make their own more mean ones but um you know these have done a really really good job but i now need to invest into professional racks that are going to be more efficient with the space for what i can actually hold on to uh, i hear you absolutely <laughs> The curse of the recessive. <laughs> yeah. so I was talking about Calico earlier, and uh, one of my really completely different projects to, to what I'm working with here is this boy here, Zeus. He is a super pastel exantic of the VPI line, and he's going to a Calico female that's 100% hit for exantic. So I'm really oh, hoping man. a pastel Calico exantic. I don't know if you've seen them from. Um, the JD constriction. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I really, really hope not. That stormtrooper stuff, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want to make a smoke trooper. Yeah, you know? there you go. There you go. <laughs> That's awesome. I love this boy. So, guys, one of the other projects that I'm really excited about, it won't be happening this season, but it possibly might be next season because the females are not ready yet, but she's feeding like an absolute champ is the Burgundy Albino project. Now, this is the male, and he's a uh, possible het pied. Nice. And uh, Burgundy Albino came out of BPI. They produced the first hets, and they passed those hets on to someone else that produced the first visual. Um, but not a lot had kind of been done with it that we know about since then. And uh, it's very similar to Ultra Male. Some say it's a bit similar to the Monarch. But mm -hmm. It's definitely darker. It's darker than uh, than the Ultramel, but it, it looks. I mean, it is similar, obviously, but it, it looks really cool. I wonder. I wonder if that darkness translates into other combinations. Um, sometimes when you have two genes that are really similar to each other, and you're like, "Oh, they're the same gene, the same gene," until you start putting them in certain combinations, you're like, "Oh wait, they're really different. They act different." So, absolutely, um, that is an exciting project. That you know, kind of gets me thinking. <laughs> I'm just going to quickly grab the pied because you've got to see the pied um, that he's going to. And she's a pied and she's possible hat for Burgundy Albino. So, you know, it's going to be an exciting one to see if we can prove both these out. I'd love to see this in Clown and Leopard. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. But this is the pied. Um, and she's the only pied in my collection. Like when I got into ball pythons, I wasn't a massive fan of pied until I saw this young lady. And wow. uh, I love this level of pied. Dude, the blacks are so dark on the saddles, man. And the yeah. bordering around the saddles, I love that. Oranges are just incredible. So many people think that this girl will definitely prove out to be Het for Burgundy Albino. We know Hets can sometimes influence, you know, the look of a snake. Nothing guaranteed, but this girl certainly looks like if there was a marker of sorts, that she's showing it. I agree. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> for sure. We're rooting for you on that one, for sure. <laughs> but, yeah, she's an absolute champ of a feeder, but she's got a way to go yet before uh, she'll be ready for that project. Awesome, man. Do you want to see something just really simple but really cool? Yeah, man. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get our fan favorite. So th this animal here you can't genetically – reproduce yeah and it's just a single gene albino but the reason why it stands out is because of the paradox within its oh animal. yeah oh, that's cool man if, if you see the head the eyes are black oh yeah oh really oh yeah yeah yeah. i can see that for an albino that's pretty cool <laughs> that's awesome wow i've Did never seen one like that? that the paradox in you know runs all down the body there's a good level of it it's um she's astounding. There's another one that looks like she's going into shed. She's dialing off a little bit. Is that one you produced? No, I actually purchased this from a local breeder that was getting out of breeding. Oh, wow. Breeding. They were going into breeding cats or something. So I was really <laughs> lucky. <laughs> I was really lucky to come across this thing now. I snapped her up straight away. Absolutely. Yeah. That's awesome, dude. That's so cool. Sometimes I think about getting out and getting into cats. <laughs> yeah, that that project will have to happen at your house. That's a quicker. That's a quicker turnaround. I feel like you don't have to wait a couple of years. You know, you just they'll produce. <laughs> Grief.
what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you one more boy, actually. Um, so one of my biggest goals this breeding season, I've got some awesome, awesome projects, but um, one that just for me is going to really hit the spot is my leopard clown uh, project. And I'm going to grab a boy to show you. So this boy here is a vanilla leopard and he's 100% nice. head of a clown. That's great. That's awesome looking, man. I don't know if you can see his head stamp. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The horseshoe head stamp. Yeah. That's the cool. vanilla has just made him look so clean. Yeah. The alien heads that. are like so much lighter than regular uh, leopards. It's super my dream, well defined. My dream right there is to create a pastel vanilla leopard clown. He's gone to two females. I've actually got some eggs in the incubator. They're going to be a bit of a question mark because he was in with that female that produced those eggs, but for only one night. It was like two weeks before ovulation as well. He was another one that wasn't quite ready, so I went with a different plan and a different project and then gave him a try right at the end. And he did it. <laughs> So some, we'll see. some lottery eggs, huh? That's cool. So I have backup mails for some of my plans. I always have, you know, several projects I really, really want to do. So, um, you know, that was a case of having another project that I really wanted to produce some more clown females to grow up and grow on because I'm going to be working heavily with clown. But I tried him out, you know, right towards the end just to see if he was ready more than anything. But the fact he locked up was... Um, <laughs> it's incredible. We've had um, a bit more excitement when those eggs start pipping out, which will be at the end of this month. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. So, yeah, I mean, a little earlier you are telling us a little bit about it, but I, I want to know if you could work with any combo, like if you could just, you know, bring up any combo, what would it be? Your dream combo. So my dream combo, and I was thinking about this earlier, for me, it would be a triple recessive which would be a puzzle hypo vanilla clown. I just think that would be mind blowing. Wow. If I could snap my fingers and just have someone land that animal into my hands, that would be the animal. That mm. is a really interesting combo. We ask that question to a lot of people and nobody's ever like that's. Yeah. That's what's great about I this like is that, that <laughs> people, all, everybody has different visions and, and that's an awesome idea. I'm, I'm, we're sitting here. I'm trying to think of what that would look like. I, uh, hmm. <laughs> oh man. Be amazing. I was looking earlier and, um, you know, I was trying to do some research on what it might look like. And I've seen, I've seen some outstanding vanilla hypo females that have just mm -hmm. been out of this world. Tony Wilson's got some in his collection. And, uh, when I've seen the puzzle gene and it's the puzzle gene is really hot in the UK right now. It's, it's mm -hmm. not very readily available. You know, people are buying possible heads just for the chance to get that animal into their collection and get that gene in there and try and prove it out. And, um, I think, you know, that puzzle mixed with clown mixed with the hypo and the vanilla together, that animal would just be mind blowing. Astounding. I, I, I agree. Be it's a good bright. one. Super bright. So <laughs> if you, if you could pick, one person that influenced you the most in the hobby and helped you out, who would that be? Like I said before, there's so many people in the community that have an influence on you. You know, like the, the guys at the top level, like Justin Kabilka and Aussie Boys and A-Pin, Derek DeMeyer and Freedom Breeder. But, you know, if I'm picking somebody on a, a personal level that's helped mentor me and I'm lucky enough to have quite a few of his snakes in my collection, it would be uh, Tony Wilson here in the UK. He yeah. actually produced some puzzle animals that Justin actually bought off him because oh, wow. of the quality that was within them. And I'm lucky I've got, I think it's about four or five animals from Tony. And I'm a firm believer that you start off with quality and your output's going to be quality. He's one of those people that when I stepped into his collection, uh, when I did that first video with him where I went around there, I was floating all the way home because of the level of, of the quality and the layers within his projects, within his animal, particularly with the leopard gene. I'd never stepped into a collection where we could see so many different leopard combos and see how leopard had worked with so many different genes. He's real particular about, you know, the genes that he uses and what he produces. He really has that vision in his head. And, um, you know, he's mentored me quite a bit. He's always there if I need him. You know, I can go and ask him a question and his advice is always really, really solid. That's awesome, man. Does he have a YouTube channel? He doesn't know. He's only actually done videos with me. Um, but we live so far away from each other. 
it's like a good nine hour drive to sort of get there and back so um i would be doing a, a lot more with him but no no he hasn't got his own youtube channel but he is on facebook so okay we'll drop that facebook link down below that's cool. yeah for sure he's still got some animals available as well and almost everybody that's purchased from him has been really really happy so many people bought from him after doing those videos and i was getting the messages back to say how happy they were with the animals so it's fantastic we can make those connections to people that's awesome man yeah yeah that's great um I, we don't know him very well i think that'd be cool just to get to know who he is we love getting to know more people you know that's mm -hmm. like the fun of this so. he was breeding like right at the beginning when you just started breeding normals you know he was there before the, the boom of all the genetics and all the morphs so you know his experience is, is vast that's awesome that's great man so um all right well I think that you got a lot of stuff. You have a lot of awesome things going on. And um, we just want to encourage you to, you know, stick with that YouTube, man, because I know it's the grind and, and we're dealing with that as well. Um, so we just really appreciate it. We, we look up to you on the YouTube aspect as well. You're growing very fast and, uh, you know, you have really cool animals and we appreciate you coming on. Thanks, guys. I really, really appreciate that. It means, it means a lot to me. It absolutely does. And keep doing what you're doing because your channel is absolutely fantastic. The variety of people you're getting out to see. And you're a lot of fun, as always. <laughs> thanks, man. We appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. We do appreciate that as well, yeah. Thanks so much again, Rich, for coming on the channel. It's awesome getting to talk with you and get to know you a little bit better. Um, if you guys liked this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Give us a comment down below. To tell us what you think about his dream snake. And uh, hit the bell icon. I know you guys love the bell icon. And uh, subscribe, please. Yeah, and make sure you follow Rich on his channel. We'll have his information below as well. you think we'd have this memorized by now. <laughs> <laughs> Just want to thank everybody for the support. Thanks to Ryan and Ben for having me on. It's been an absolute pleasure. You know, I love working with you guys. So it's been an honor. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Thanks, brother. And uh, we'll see you soon. See you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs> and uh, so you definitely guys want to stay tuned for this one. <laughs> All right. I guess I guess my engine going. I know. <laughs> I kind of want to go on Morph Market right now. <laughs> Just start looking it up. <laughs> what I had to do for that because it wasn't much about the bird in the albino. You know, I just looked at all the ultramel combos with clown and with leopard and tried to get a gauge of how it may look. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, so now's that time. You could uh, say your your catchphrase. My catchphrase? <laughs> Which one? <laughs> ben tries to put people on the spot at the very end of the videos. <laughs> of a video so i'm just like <laughs> but i want to have youtube this channel is all about keeping and breeding all python so if that excites you then hit that subscribe button <laughs> you know, there it is I see you cool. Bye -bye. That's, that's pretty good <laughs> ours ours ryan's like ben you should we should have a, a catchphrase that we're gonna you know say it and i'm like <laughs> Uh, I, thought you do. I thought it was the guitar thing was going to become your thing. <laughs> that got a little out of hand. Never... <laughs> That's so funny. That was uh, it's something that uh, uh, Ron from from uh, BBM is always like, "Hey Ben, you should do the the uh, the guitar thing." He's always telling me to do it. Yeah, I think that would be a real hit. When I first saw it, I was like, "That's pretty cool." <laughs> It was like an on the spot throwback to Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventures. And I it was like, this would be funny in the video. Let's do that. We both do it at the same time as well, which is really spooky. <laughs> we, we are pretty spooky. Yeah. We've, been, we've known each other for a long time. So. 